Walking around your home barefoot or in socks can be extremely uncomfortable if you have a typical concrete slab on grade floor. Concrete is a thermal mass and will suck the heat out of the home if it's coupled to the ground. Unlike those who live in homes with crawl spaces or basements, this is a common issue for many homeowners with slab foundations. To make things worse, if you have radiant heat in your slab, you're basically flushing money down the drain. To save on heating bills and to improve the comfort within our homes, it's important to thermally uncouple slab on grade foundations from the ground. We're going to walk through five different approaches to insulated slab on grade foundations and determine which one is right for your project. So the first strategy that we can use to insulate a slab on grade is to simply install rigid insulation underneath the slab separated by a vapor barrier. First, if we zoom in here, we need to prepare for the installation of the slab by providing a layer of compacted crushed stone. This provides a stable substrate for the slab as well as a capillary break between the damp earth and the dry slab above. Essentially, we are breaking any kind of capillary continuity that could draw liquid water upwards. Then we install our rigid insulation layers. Here we have two layers of type 9 EPS that have been installed with staggered and offset joints, but you could use any other rigid insulation product. We want this rigid insulation to have a high compressive strength for obvious reasons. The type 9 EPS has a compressive strength of about 25 PSI, which is more than enough to support a four inch slab and the live loads above in most cases. The bearing walls still need to be installed on grade beams. And then over the rigid insulation, we need to install a vapor barrier. Right here we're calling out a very durable 15 mil vapor barrier. Now, this vapor barrier is installed between the concrete slab and the rigid insulation, not underneath the rigid insulation, and laps over the top of the concrete stem wall over here to act as a capillary break. Now, the reason why we want the vapor barrier to separate the slab from the insulation is that when the concrete is being poured, the wet concrete has the potential to find a path underneath the seams and joints of the rigid insulation layers. And we get something called iceberging, where the rigid insulation lifts up and floats if the concrete mixture happens to get underneath and we really don't want that because that ruins the entire pour or cast so we really want that vapor barrier to be separating those two layers the vapor barrier also obviously prevents any soil gases and vapor from migrating upwards through the slab so it serves as a vapor barrier from the damp soils a capillary break and a separation layer Next, we have the actual concrete slab here, which gets cast over the vapor barrier. Here, we have a piece of rigid insulation that provides a thermal break and a bond break between the slab and the stem wall so we don't get any thermal bridging. Now, installed over the vapor barrier and stem wall, we have a foam sill gasket with continuous beads of sealant installed above and below the gasket, which aids in air sealing this joint between the sill plate and the stem wall, and also serves as a capillary break material. This is our pressure-treated sill plate, and then on the exterior side, we want to close off this joint between the sill plate and the stem wall from water and air leakage with a fluid-applied flashing or a primed flashing tape that's compatible with concrete. Here, we're using zip liquid flash since zip system sheathing is called out in this detail. We want to make sure it's integrated into whatever WRB is specified. Then on the exterior side of the foundation wall, we have a continuous fluid applied waterproofing or damp proofing that gets installed all the way down and past the footings and beyond, which basically prevents water from being wicked inside through the pores of the concrete and migrating upwards. It can still look up through the footings here, but it will limit the amount of water that's absorbed into the concrete from the soils on the exterior faces. We also have a dimple mat installed over the waterproof foundation, which is arguably more important than waterproofing here, as it prevents the buildup of hydrostatic pressure by providing a continuous drainage plane. So if water was to get behind this dimple mat, it would simply drain harmlessly down to the drainage tile instead of being held in tension against the foundation walls. The dimple mat laps over the drainage tile, which is set in a bed of crushed stone and wrapped in filter fabric, and that gets drained to daylight. Remember, perimeter drains actually need to drain and discharge somewhere. So that's our first strategy of insulating a slab on grade foundation. In the second insulated slab detail, we have added an additional layer of rigid insulation on the outside of the foundation walls. This would be suitable if you were building in a colder climate. Here, we have the same detail as the previous assembly with our foundation waterproofing all the way down past the footings to grade. For the rigid insulation skirt, we're calling out Rockwool Comfort Board here. We want to make sure that whatever rigid insulation we're using is resistant to water and moisture, as well as insects. Insects like ants and termites will burrow into foam-based products, especially if they get wet 
wet, and we want to make sure that we're protecting the rigid insulation layer as best as possible. Bugs can also burrow into rock wool, but they have a significantly harder time since this shreds their exoskeleton. Just in case, we are going to protect this rigid insulation with a protection board. Here we're using a cement board for protection. Some cement boards are not rated for ground contact, and some are. You just have to look for the right ones. So that cement board will protect the rigid insulation skirt, and then we have our dimple mat, which relieves hydrostatic pressure and allows water to drain harmlessly down to the drain tile if it gets behind there. And here is our drainage tile set in a clean crushed stone bed wrapped with filter fabric and drains to daylight. We want to terminate the top of the dimple mat with a mold strip or flashing strip set in a continuous bead of sealant, just so no dirt gets behind there. We also want to make sure that we are protecting the top of the rigid insulation skirt with flashing. Here we have a simple stainless base flashing that can be manufactured to size by your sheet metal fabricator. And then this flashing is integrated into the weather resistive barrier. And then we are still sealing that joint right there at the sill with the fluid applied flashing. If we zoom in, you can see that the liquid flash ensures that we have a monolithically watertight and airtight transition. And then we install the stainless flashing which covers the top of the rigid insulation skirt. And then that stainless flash gets flashed to the WRB, in this case the surface of the zip sheathing, and then we run our bug screen around the rigid insulation on the exterior. So a fairly simple upgrade to the previous assembly. Now, one of the biggest problems with locating the insulation on the exterior of the assembly, like in this detail, is that it's exposed to bugs, it's exposed to weathering, and it's exposed to water. So there's a higher potential for deterioration over time. So if you don't want to install an exterior rigid insulation skirt, you can actually install the rigid insulation on the interior side of the wall. This provides a thermal break between the warmer ground below and the slab and the cold ground out here on the exterior of the assembly. And most importantly, it protects the insulation from damage. So you have an exposed concrete stem wall here, and our rigid insulation is back here. We still run our vapor barrier up and over the stem walls like this. The insulation acts as a thermal break by uncoupling the slab from the ground, and the earth underneath the slab stays warmer when it's freezing out here. So this specific strategy is for climates or regions that may receive colder winters, but are still at risk of ants or termites burrowing into the exterior foam or other insulation products on the outside and deteriorating it. Now, the problem with this strategy is that we still get quite a bit of heat loss through this joint in cold climates since there isn't much insulation protecting the slab from the cold stem walls. So that's the benefit of having rigid insulation on the exterior of the assembly. It's a trade-off, but you have to ask yourself whether you want the extra long-term durability or the added thermal performance. Next, we have another insulated slab on grade foundation option for you. If you're working with a monolithic slab where the entire slab is poured at once, including a turned down footing, and you're trying to insulate it, an easy way to do it is to insulate above the monolithic slab and then pour a topping slab. This is about a two inch reinforced topping slab and it retains the appearance of a concrete floor it can be polished, it can be stained and sealed in whatever way that you want. We just insulate below it with any rigid insulation of your choosing as long as it has an acceptable compressive strength. Here we're using extruded polystyrene instead of expanded polystyrene or rock wool, although you should be able to use either one of those. And then our vapor barrier is actually in contact with the ground like this. We don't have to accommodate the rigid insulation into the formwork prior to the pour. We just installed the rigid insulation after the main slab has been cast, so that makes things a lot easier for those working with monolithic turndown slabs. We just have to make sure that we're taping the joints of the rigid insulation to prevent iceberging. Then on the outside of the assembly, we have the option to install an additional rigid insulation skirt if you're building in a cold climate. If not, you can skip this. This just provides an additional thermal break between the cold concrete stem wall and the curb where this sill plate is anchored and the warm slab. This is almost like an ICF assembly at this location. In climate zones five or higher, you really want to consider using this. Then we can flash the joint between the sill plate and the stem wall with liquid flashing to keep the water, air, and bugs out. We come in with our stainless flashing and flash that to to the WRB with flashing tape. We also have a protection board or protection skirt with cement board for the rigid insulation. And then we install our dimple mat, which extends down to the drainage tile to prevent the buildup of hydrostatic pressure. And then our drainage tile is set in crushed stone, wrapped in filter fabric, and that all drains to daylight. And that all should keep the slab quite dry as long as we have a decent amount of compacted crushed stone underneath the slab as a capillary break. So that's one option if you're trying to insulate a monolithic slab. 
Lastly, our final option is a frost-protected shallow foundation. This is ideal in cold climates or sites where soil depth is quite low, such as those with bedrock or ledge just several inches below the surface. Instead of having to dig the footings all the way down to the frost depth and installing the rigid insulation vertically, we can actually install the rigid insulation horizontally with an insulation skirt like this. Now, the strategy changes the isotherms so that the ground stays warmer underneath the slab and doesn't cause any kind of potential frost damage within the actual slab or footings. We want to make sure that the rigid insulation is installed continuously under the slab, which can be tricky, but it is possible. We want to install it in a waffle pattern, but you can use any rigid insulation of your choosing, whether it's rigid foam insulation or rigid mineral wool. We install our vapor barrier over the rigid insulation and we tuck it over the top of the slab. And then we want to flash over the top of the slab and the rigid insulation, and then down over the horizontal rigid insulation skirt with a self-adhered flashing membrane to protect it from damage from water, bugs, and weathering. Then we want to apply a protective skirt on the outside, which can be made of coil stock or cement board. Here in this detail, I'm using uh, coil stock, which extends all the way down to the horizontal insulation skirt. And then we want to flash the coil stock to the weather barrier. So here you can see how that flashing tape laps over the coil stock. We also have a foam sill gasket with sealant to help seal the sill plate connection. You could also apply an additional bead of liquid flash here for some extra redundancy. Now, this part is really crucial. We need to install a drainage mat with filter fabric or a dimple mat over the horizontal rigid insulation skirt to avoid saturating that rigid insulation. So any water that happens to drain down here will just drain into the perforated drainage tile. We want to make sure that all of this is bearing on compacted crushed stone, and we want to make sure that the drainage tile drains to daylight away from the foundation. For more information on insulating and preventing moisture issues for slab-on-grade foundations, go to my website at asiri-designs.com. There we have over 100 building science articles and resources that cover a wide range of topics, from remediating existing buildings to best practice details for new assemblies. Links will be in the description below. Good luck on your projects. Cheers.